Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm so excited and honored to be here with you today. We have our stories of hope, and our first guest is a story of hope. Uh, definitely has had many, many uh, challenging experiences in her life that could have kept her uh, not making it. So basically, yeah, there, there were a lot of things that she had to face and see and liberate and rise above. And she's here to tell us about it today. Her name is uh, Tawana Yvette, and her journey has been one of profound resilience and self-discovery. From the moment that she entered this world, she's been fighting against the odds. She was born prematurely in 1975. Both her mother and her faced a life-threatening situation. Her battle with phenomia, uh, coupled with a soaring fever, cast a shadow of uncertainty over uh, their survival. Amidst this struggle, her biological father, a charismatic figure with a dark side, inflicted deep wounds upon her, leaving uh, scars that would shape her life's path. So she's going to tell us more about that. Welcome to the show today, Taiwana. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's good to have you. And like I told you in the green room, you are definitely sparkling and shining. So whatever <laughs> darkness you had to face in this life, it's done. Yes, it is. It's gone. Right? We're it's, done with it. Right. We're done with it. So you were talking about how you wanted to talk about um, taking the mask off. Is that how yeah. you said it? Taking the mask I, off. Dropping, what? Yes. Dropping, dropping the mask? Yes. So what does that mean? So for me, dropping the mask meant um, I lived for 47 years under other people's expectations, other people's rules, other people's um, whatever. It, 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 whatever other people wanted me to be is what I had to be. So I was this to this person. I was this, this to this person, but I was never me. And it got to the point where... I, I didn't know me. I remember my eldest child saying to me, you're so fake. And I took it as an insult, but in hindsight, she was correct because mm -hmm. I didn't know me. I was being this to this person and this to this person. And that came from being abused as a child and, and, and having to do things for acceptance and love. And I thought I had to do that my whole life. Um, so after my experience, um, when I was 47 and trying to end my life, I got to the point to where I said, you know what? I'm going to learn who I am. And I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to find something in me to start. We're going to build a foundation here. So what is this foundation? I'm a good person and I'm kind. That's what I could find in me at the moment. I'm a good person and I'm kind. And I started to realize when my sister made a comment at the worst time possible. You're wearing a mask for everyone. You don't even know who you are. You've been so busy trying to gain the approval of every single person around you that you don't know you. And so I sat in my apartment alone and I learned who I was and I love who I am. 
And now that foundation that where I could only find you're a good person and you're kind. It's here now. It ranks. Yes. Yes. And those masks, I don't, I don't care if I'm liked or not. It, it does not matter to me. If you do not like me, then we're just not aligned and that's okay. I wish you well. You go your way. I'll go mine. But I refuse to be anybody except who I was born to be ever again. And Hello. my life changed. My life changed when I made that decision. It's so, it's so uh, you know, profound what you're saying because so many people have that have that experience, you know, where mm -hmm. they are people pleasers and where they uh, you know, not not have themselves in the equation in the relationship. Yes. And they right. And they they don't know where one person begins and where they end and where's the beginning and the end and all the things. But when you were saying when you were sitting in the apartment and you when you were sitting with yourself and you found um, that one thing yes. that, that you could find that was good about you and you found that you were kind and you found mm -hmm. that you were a good person. It's interesting because even that kindness and that good person was also that person when your daughter said you're fake, when your sister yes. said um, about the mask or, you know, like, mm -hmm. well, I can't remember exactly what your sister said, but even then, um, that that person was also there, that kind yes. person, yes. that good person, yes. right? So I'm just curious as to even more. It's great that you found that that you found the what you could build upon. You could build yes. upon kindness. You could feel you know that you could feel good about the person you are. I am good. Yes. Um, it because at some point it became hard where when you when you had to draw the boundaries. Yes. That, Right. Like not to yes. let people disrespect you or not to let not for you not to drop down into the sinkhole if other yes. people don't approve of who you are. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it did become hard. I I can't say I lost anyone because I feel like people who are meant to be around you stay. Mm -hmm. Um, you're either a lesson you're, 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 I have a really wonderful, beautiful, she's my heart, um, friend. And she, she always goes, Ty, it's either reason, season or lifetime. And, um, so I feel, I, I can't say I've lost people because they were seasons and reasons. They weren't my lifetimes. Um, so yeah, even in even in people leaving or me walking away from people, um I think even that's kind because I'm being kind to myself. And I think ultimately in the end, that's where it has to begin. Yes. It has to begin with the self so that you you because prior to possibly you were looking for approval and accepting approval. right approval from yes. others and then you got to the point where um when you were sitting with yourself you were like i stamp this approval here because i'm a kind and good person and i approve and i'm the authority here and i'm fine with me yes and One then it didn't then it didn't matter anymore basically claiming your authority plaque back claiming your agency back claiming your your power My back and then it didn't matter w whether um others approved of you it's a big it's a big it's a big girl pants job when you when you don't care about what other people think that's a big piece i right. think that comes with age and experience because it does it does it does you know um because that's not that's not an easy thing so what are you doing now since you are a kind and a good person and that you are completely a hundred percent with yourself, with your mask off, being your liberated self, you've, you know, overcome suicide, obviously. Yes. yes. That word. And it's, it's well done you. Thank you. Thank a big, you. A big, it's a big, again, another one of those 
traumatic experiences that when the soul is seeking a way out, or I should say the human is seeking a way out um, and, and then takes it. And really yes. basically what people feel when they want to commit suicide, because I also healed suicide ideation mm. in my life too. So I understand yes. and, um, what it is that we want to uh, take away is the pain. The pain, the pain. We just want it to stop. Yeah. Um, who am I now? <laughs> I have gone from being an executive assistant who has worked for White House appointees to I am a psychic, intuitive healer, um, psychic medium, spiritual guide. And I've accepted my spiritual gifts. I've had them since I was two. Nice. And um, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of them. I'm not ashamed of me. Um, I'm still kind to people. I'm still a good person. I still give away a lot. Um, and I, I'm also a spiritual coach. So I teach people how to heal from those very same traumas that I went through. Um, who better to have, teach? Do you have your um, social media online? Is it, are you on Facebook? Are you, what Every are the handles? Let, let Black us get butterfly the goddess. Black butterfly goddess everywhere. Black butterfly goddess everywhere. Instagram, Facebook. It, yeah, on all of them. Black on butterfly all. goddess. Okay. Okay. And so what is it that people do? They book an appointment with you and you guys yes. have a discovery session. Is that how yeah. it works? Yes. We have a uh, we have a discovery session. Let's see if we can work together. Let's see if I can help you. Let's see if you need therapy or coaching. Um, and then we, we, we sign our little contract and, um, we get moving and, um, or they can book readings or they can book one-time sessions. And I'm also starting, uh, tomorrow to teach different webinars. So, um, tomorrow's, uh, webinar begins our four week on narcissist healing from narcissistic abuse. Wow, that's good. You've really uh, turned everything, all of those traumas around, and now you're helping people while at the same time having embraced your spiritual gifts. Taiwana, Yvette, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's just thank a short you. segment. I want to let you know that we might contact you again for the future to have you on for a longer show because we can talk about some of those traumas that have been overcome. Absolutely. And, uh, for now, I just want to thank you and again, congratulate you for how far you've come and what a wonderful job you're doing. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And the link that you have for the to promote the show is the same for the replay, FYI. So, awesome. Awesome. Great. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Our next guest today is Tiffany Jones. She was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina, and along with her husband, has been living in a nearby town since 2011. They have three children together. Tiffany enjoys experiencing new cultures, foods, and scenery with her family. She's an author and a public speaker and passionate about sharing her story of overcoming 15 years of suicidal thoughts. By sharing the key factors that led to her healing, she offers practical steps to anyone struggling. Each factor was critical for change and it is vital for maintaining health. Welcome to the show today, Tiffany Jones. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So um, I was speaking about this with my first guest as well, that the shadow of suicide, you know, affects many, many people and mm -hmm. that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And it's also a, a shadow, a shadow that, that, that plagues many people, obviously you for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So what was that? I mean, over the years, 15 years, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, when was it? When when did you get to the point where you were just like, okay, this is it? Yeah. Um, so it started when I was about 13. Um, 
And it started with just not really wanting to be here, not really wanting the life I had. Um, and I would have these intrusive thoughts, um, but I had no intention of acting on them. I didn't want that. I just wanted my life to be different or better in some way. And slowly that turned into just more thoughts of different ways that I might hurt myself. Um, and it was just a battle. I didn't want that for myself, but it was just these thoughts were constantly invading my mind um, and really would struggle with the community I grew up in. Um, would say things about suicide like it's a very selfish thing for someone to do um, and that would just bring more shame to me and that would keep me from sharing with other people. Um, I felt very isolated in my feelings because I would hear of what shame that would bring to a family if someone had committed suicide, um, hearing survivors grief from those that, you know, if I had only said this to them, maybe they'd still be here. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation about suicide, about people that choose that, uh, that isolates those who have those feelings. Um, and I found myself a mother of three children, um, very overwhelmed. And I, it took me thinking, if I want a better life for me and my children, I have to speak to someone. I have to voice this and stop trying to do it on my own. I had received therapy before, but it was really just for symptoms of panic attacks. And once that was better, we moved on. Um, and I never even addressed those suicidal thoughts with that therapist because of the shame for so many years. So um, you you had the suicidal thoughts even after your children were born? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you carry you carry those. I, I it really is so irritating you know uh to hear about the shaming <laughs> the shaming that that i mean when a person's suicidal the last thing they need is add more shame into the mix absolutely yeah. you know what i mean that's just that's like whoever those people are that are saying that mm -hmm. um it's that's the last thing that people need to hear mm -hmm. um so how long now have you been suicide free? Let's see. It's been oh, nine years. Yay. That's huge, yeah. Tiffany. Yeah. Wow. That's that's when you know. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. those when when you know you're not having those thoughts anymore, that that's not something that's gonna come in and get you anymore. That right. that's for years it was this. Oh well, this is nice for now. Um yeah, I, I'm probably a year or two that I kept thinking, Ooh, I really hope this lasts because right. I don't know that I can do that again. Um, because that at really that time, into, yeah, know. I was going to say at that time, you were probably always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it almost didn't feel real because I hadn't known anything different with it starting so young, yeah. you know, growing into an adult, I didn't know that's how I was supposed to feel. And so it felt like just a fairy tale for a long time. So now you're in your real life, mm -hmm. you're in your real life, and now you're helping others heal. You're, mm -hmm. you're inspiring and supporting others. And uh, you met, you met, you said earlier something in the green room about how, what you want to highlight for people today, aside from the fact that you healed uh, yourself from suicide, that that is not something that you are facing anymore and right. that people don't have to commit suicide, that there is a way out. Yes. So the three um, aspects that really was life-changing for me was taking care of my whole person. Um, I had tried at different times to take care of my mental health, to take care of my spiritual health. Um, and I really didn't know how to take care of my physical body much. I was not raised in a place that we really talked about that. It was like, oh yeah, exercise is good. Eat an apple, whatever. Um, but I had started to kind of learn more about taking care of my physical body. Uh, and I never put them all together. And when I finally did that, that's when I had healing and realized that if I want to be healthy in, in my whole person, I have to take care of my whole person. If I only focus on one aspect, they're all connected. I'm still going to have to do work in other areas of my life. And so I work to teach people how to take care of their body 
their mind and their spiritual health so that they can experience healing also. Yeah, that's really great. That's a wonderful way to give that back and support others. I, I really like uh, the journey. And not only that, but you are also raising the future leaders in our world. You have three children and they are also learning by your example and mm -hmm. by your guidance and all of that. So that's also important. How old are your children today? I have a 17-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 9-year-old. You you look really young. I'm sure people <laughs> tell you that. When you say you have a 17 year old, it doesn't look real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that's funny. Um, now, how does how do people work with you? Do they uh, how, look, first? Let's tell the audience how to find you on social media, and then tell us about how people work with you. They come on a call with you. How is that done? Or do you uh, have, do put postings on social media, or how does that work? Sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is tcb. Tiffany L. Jones. On Facebook, it is TCB, A Hopeful Journey. And I will be posting soon about workshops that I'm hosting. I'm going to do a series of workshops where I will invite experts in the fields of mental health, physical health, and spiritual health. Um, and they will share about their own practice, but even just things people can do at home. Um, so I'll be posting that in the next few weeks. I do post different um, kind of coping strategies, kind of updates on my own journey of how I'm improving my physical health um, and ways that I improve my spiritual health and mental health. And so um, my inbox there is open if people reach out to me. Um, I also have a website called thecursedbrain.com that has a lot of recommendations for podcasts, books, um, different things like that people can look into. Um, that's the title of my first book, The Cursed Brain, and it deals with how um, the curse from the Bible in Genesis 3 affects everything around us, but we have options to kind of work with that and be healthy in spite of that. That's wonderful. I like all of the things that you're doing, how you're putting it all together and 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 the next offering and the service. When people want to work with you, they do they jump on a call with you on a discovery call? Um, I have not offered that yet. I'm trying to do a lot more locally right now. I, um, I might look into that in the future, but I just wanted to kind of work to build community um, where I am locally at the time. Okay, awesome. Well, what is it that you want to leave our, our audience with today? What is the What is your final message that you want to leave them with? Uh, I would just say that if you want to be healthy, to be mindful of taking care of your whole person, um, and to speak out, speak to someone. Um, it is difficult to stay stuck, isolated in shame. And uh, I know that sometimes you feel like other people can't handle your pain, but they can. There's people out there that want to see you succeed. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for coming on the show. I appreciate that. And uh, we're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into today's Stories of Hope. Our next guest is Russell Herricks. When all the tools for inner healing stopped working, Russell found himself back at square one. After a life-saving surgery, years of emotional work seemed undone, and his struggles resurfaced. He realized that most tips and tricks were temporary solutions, not pathways to true wholeness. Russell discovered that the only way out was to dive deep into the truth of his experiences, embracing and owning every part of his journey, now as a speaker, emotional intelligence workshop facilitator, and sacred geometry activator, Russell helps others align with their soul and step into their true mission. Welcome to the show today, Russell. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really great to be here. So how did all of this get started? Did this get all started after surgery or before surgery? <laughs> so this was day one. <laughs> as far as, uh, we'll say childhood was a little bit messy for me. I was born into pretty much a divorce and then stepped into the space of living in a blended family and navigating that. And 
throughout my experiences in this blended family that I grew up in, uh, for a long time, we'll say I was the baby and in a sense, maybe last in line for all the things, which when you're a kid, when you're in that space, sometimes you don't get what you need or you don't understand things in the way that you maybe could or should. And it progressed to a certain point where when I was a kid, my mother ended up getting cancer and I got to experience watching her go through treatment for about four years before she passed away. And mm -hmm. I became a kid without a parent raising kids and not particularly living for myself. And then that progressed to eventually I was out of the home, didn't really know what to do with life. And I was just kind of floating around for a little bit until I started, we'll say, the healing journey, mm -hmm. which started with books, podcasts, uh, stepping into different types of trainings that allowed me to start seeing things in a different light, experiencing them differently, and opening up my perspectives, which when I stepped into that space, naively, I was like, oh, I found the only answer that I needed and felt like I was on top of the world, which I was. And that worked for maybe about three, four years until I came into the space of right about when COVID hit as I got sick, couldn't get into the doctors. They all told me I was fine, but something in me said, no, you're not fine. There's something going on. It's big. And uh, after about eight months, I finally got into the doctors as far as through the emergency room. And about three days later, they found out, hey, you've actually been an active heart failure and you're oh. a kid. And we don't know how you are alive. Oh, and my God. Yeah. So they were like, here's what we need to do. We can get you in tomorrow. <laughs> and, you know, I was 29 at the time. I was just purely shocked. And at the same time, on one hand, I'm incredibly grateful of I found out what needs to happen and terrified of what needs to happen. And then on the other hand, it was I just fought my whole life to get to this moment and almost lost it all. Mm -hmm. So underwent the surgery, come out the other end. And it's almost like I had the glasses and they were taken off again, where the next layer was starting to be received, which is, you know, there's more to life than what you've experienced. There's more to life that you're here to do or here to be. And who are you going to be? now that you've had this experience and what are you going to do with it? And that got reflected outwards as well, which is I was seeing my life that I created and what's not working. And then it was, I don't know what to do again. So all these tools, tips and tricks that worked before, it was almost like I hit the wall and they didn't work anymore. So that's when I started stepping in, doing a deeper dive and stepping more into the spiritual side of things and trying to figure out what do I need to do so I can have, we'll say, the experience of life that I'm here to have and who it is I'm here to be and what I'm here to enjoy. It's really interesting listening to all of this and like, you know, you tell the story about all this and knowing that you also have to work and you also have to make money and you also have to do <laughs> your thing, right? It's like, yeah. And on top of it, you've got this, all these, this like other major job over here, because uh, when we're looking at our spiritual journey, I, I always say this, is it a full-time job? That's mm -hmm. a full-time job. Your Our ascension journey, our spiritual journey is a full-time job, you know, but then you've got the 3D world that you have to also show up for and do things, mm -hmm. with, right? Thank God you didn't lose your life and that yeah. you were walking around. Uh, you know, with a heart failure, it's like, oh, my God. Um, so uh, tell us where you're at today. Like, what what, what are you doing today that um, has you really dialed in and, and really excited about living and dreaming yeah. and creating your life? Yeah. So there's so many ways I can approach it, but I've come into the space of where I'm experiencing life in the moment, in the present not somewhere off in the future of this is what I want or where I want to end up. It's every moment, every interaction, 
there's something in it for me. And the only time that I really have to worry about is now, but I don't have to worry at all. To where it's every single person interaction, there's something in it that we're meant to experience and receive and either create something from or take something from. So there's people that you might not even know that you encounter throughout your day, whether it's, you know, you're out in the city or if it's a random phone call. And sometimes you can hear certain things that maybe poke a button or give you, in a sense, a message. And something that's in that message is for you to expand upon or step into. So it's figuring out based on living in alignment with who I am and what I'm experiencing is what am I going to do or create with what I experience. And is, is that one of the tools? Because it's really, really good to look at it that way. Every person, every single person, if everyone looked at it that way, and used the use the decoding, use the experience yeah. as as an opportunity to you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so receive, receive a message. Would you say this is one of your tools? Uh, almost like a tool. Yeah. So uh, the way that I've kind of always thought this way, but I wasn't ever able to really integrate it in such a way that it's more of a way of being. Yeah. And I stepped into something that's called our sacred geometry, which is every single one of us has a divine design to who we are, who we're here to be. We're all unique. We're all different, which also means our experiences are different and who it is we're here to be and what we're here to create is different. So stepping into this arena or process is really saying, I no longer need all the tools because now I'm in the space of life is the arena. Life is the tool. And life is going to give me exactly what I need or what I want. So it's it's coming into the space of I'm going to get exactly what I desire or something better, or I'm going to get what's required for me to experience so I can learn and grow and expand in the way that I'm required to. And as you go through this process, it's an embodiment. So it's not like, let me step into this tool and then pay attention. It's more of a natural occurrence that happens over time because it's part of you and you just start seeing everything different. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like at first it, it's a mindset, it's a perception, it's something that it's, it's a way to perceive something, but you said it is a state of being. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way for you to relate with the world around you. Yeah. But it, it, it's a way. And that, that's a really wonderful way to look at it. Like uh, it, it really is. It's, um, it's very liberating. It's very freeing mm -hmm. and not to feel like, you know, again, victimized, but right. that you can actually feel like a creator and that everything is here to serve you in mm -hmm. one capacity or another. Yeah. And it's, it's that, and it's really, we are all here to create mm -hmm. from what we experience and whatever that is comes from within us. It's not somebody outside telling us, this is what you're here to do or be. Mm -hmm. It comes through you. Mm -hmm. And it comes through you based on your unique experiences and everything around you. So how, how do people uh, find you on social media? Like what are your handles? What's your website? Yeah. So I'm on both Facebook and Instagram and it's just Russell.horrocks and you should find me real easy. And then as far as the website goes, uh, if you want more information on sacred geometry, we have liberatemetm.com and it's going to give more of a holistic overview of what is sacred geometry, what does it mean, and stepping into uh, living from a space where you no longer need all the coaching that's more typical or the healings or uh, stepping into a space where you're no longer reliant on somebody outside of you to help you figure out what's my path and get you into this space to where you can see exactly what you need to do to live in alignment with who you are and who you're here to be. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like it's the next it's the next step. It's yeah. it's taking it's taking that next step, taking full responsibility, full mm -hmm. authority over your life and your creation and how you're creating your daily life. 
and that you are the authority, you are sovereign, you are free, you yep. are the one, and now you are stepping into this next phase in your life. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's it's that, and it's in a way that's really fun. So mm -hmm. it's not just, hey, I read a book. It's right. life, life is the canvas. So you get to step into life, and your life is the canvas. So whatever's showing up is what you start stepping into, and life is going to hand you exactly what you need regardless of maybe it's something you missed out on in the past or you think that it will bring it back to you in the moment you're ready. So good. I want to thank you, Russell Horrocks, for coming on the show today and inspiring the audience with yeah. the brilliant way uh, to live and to create and to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah, you and it was so such much. a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, and anybody just at home, if they're in a space of Maybe you feel like the tools aren't working anymore or you're doing it wrong or maybe you're broken. The truth is, is you're isn't. And it's just time for you to step into that next phase. So. Awesome. We're, we're going to take a break now on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Everyone will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest today is Aaron Soley. He's a mental wellness coach, best-selling Amazon author, mental health advocate, father of two amazing boys, and he yeah. and husband. At 37 years old, he found himself overwhelmed and in a deep depression in the basement of the townhouse he owned at the time. He was working in the financial services industry, feeling stressed out and not happy with his career. His first marriage was failing. His first son was two years old. His world felt like it was falling apart all around him. On that day, he made a decision to shift his perspective and get help to work on all his struggles from the inside out. In 2017, he founded Engage Coaching Group, an organization focused on helping men who are over 30 and struggling with career and relationship challenges. He guides his clients through a three-step process to help them master how to thrive within their personal, professional, and family life. Welcome to the show today, Aaron. Thanks so much for having me. So in the green room, we were just talking about how mental health is probably, I, I, I don't even, I, I don't know if it's considered in the top three, but it's a crisis that's growing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, yeah. and you said? Yeah, that I, um, for many years, I saw a variety of therapists and, uh, and when I was going through that marriage separation that you mentioned there. I, I found, I realized I needed to find a different type of therapist, the one that was going to be able to actually help me because uh, I didn't, I didn't know that there's all these different modalities out there. And I, I, I went out and searched for someone that could really understand what I was going through. And she said something to me that it has opened up my perspective around what I've been struggling with. Cause I had been diagnosed with depression on and off for many years. And she asked me, Aaron, you know, what is depression for you? And I said, well, it's this dark cloud that, this surrounds me. I feel stuck. I feel like everything is difficult. Everything's challenging. Getting out of bed in the morning is like a, a big exercise to do. Going to work. I put a mask on at work. Like I had to put a face on. I was in sales uh, positions, but inside I was just exhausted. And she said, yeah, you're, and that's definitely a way to look at depression. And she said, there's another way to look at it. It's anger turned inward. And that... <laughs> I, I, she, she told me at the exact right time because uh, I, I heard that clearly and realized that all of my life I was suppressing anger. I was not expressing it. I was believing uh, based on my family system and what I was taught is you don't get angry. You know, you, you know, it's not allowed. You go to your room if you're angry. You don't express your anger. And so she helped me explore that further. So do you have a healthy uh, a healthy practice now for uh, expressing anger? Yeah, I, you know, journaling uh, is a key thing that I've always gone to, even before I was, was um, like even just dealing with my depression. And then once I recognized this anger element, it's amazing what you can, we can do just writing out, you know, things that are frustrating, that are making you angry. Uh, and then to be able to go through a process where, okay, well, what, how am I really feeling uh, around this? Because anger is a surface emotion. And once you get that anger out, 
uh, it's, a, I found a lot of sadness is what I found, uh, you know, grieving my grandfather's death. He, he died when I was 10 years old and I hadn't really fully grieved that. Uh, and just a lot of sadness around my own identity of who I was and trying to be and, um, and that. So journaling is fantastic. You know, there's other safe things. Like it's all about being safe. You don't want to hurt yourself or someone else when you're expressing anger, but, you know, screaming into a pillow in a safe place. Uh, and I've gone to workshops where you actually are given a pool noodle and you you hit a chair just to get the anger out. And, and it's it's about getting through the anger and getting that other getting the other emotions to come up so you can actually feel what's really going on inside because that anger is blocking stuff. Well, I I 1000 percent agree with you because I I wrote a book on anger and I, I yeah. Um, yeah, here's here it is. It's that and I'm glad that you're doing this work for men, for the men, but um the flip side to anger, peace, the flip peace. side to anger. Awesome. Okay. That's great. Because how can we have angry peace activists out there yeah. uh running around preaching peace but have anger underneath? And unless we get in, in contact with that raw emotion and find out what what what's underneath there, like you said, underneath that anger, there is uh, there's other emotions that need to come to the surface, like sadness. There's other, um, mm -hmm. you know, and and I always say that underneath that anger, there is a truth that's waiting to be claimed. And when you're doing that journaling and you're doing that writing, you're going to most mostly find that, oh, I've been ignored. Oh, these people aren't listening to me. Oh, I'm being dismissed. These are all the things. Oh, my voice doesn't matter. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't matter. These are all the things that um, you know, are underneath there. And depression is a huge piece when people get depressed, and they feel paralyzed, and they're on the couch, and they can't get out of bed in the morning, then they go to the doctor, and they tell the doctor what's going on. And then the doctor gives them a prescription. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I, and that, that's, and that's definitely, um, you know, it, it didn't work for me, because I was on medication on and off. And, and then I would go to therapy, being on antidepressants. And the therapist, even before the one that I saw that really helped me figure out what was going on on the anger side, other ones I would go to, they'd say, okay, Aaron, I want you to just sit here and feel, you know, just feel what it feels like to feel your leg, right? Or feel your arm. Like she was trying to get me to get into my feelings and being on the medication actually numbed so much that I, I couldn't tap into the feelings, right? So um, not to say that people shouldn't be on medication, but it's important to make sure that it's right for you. And I actually started to get titrated off of mine so that I could feel the anger, feel the feelings, sadness, all that, um, and 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 find those truths inside of me. And firstly, find the false beliefs inside of me that I was believing and reprogram myself to know what's actually true about me along the way. So, yeah. Aaron, I'm so glad that you're doing this work. What are you yeah. doing locally in your community? Like, you know, the fact that you're working with men, um, you know, at, at 30 and up, I think that's so great. I'm so glad I know you now because I want to be able to, as I meet people, help, send them your way, especially men, because I think men can relate to men. It's a different situation. You know, you all were trained to, um, you know, suck it up, you know, suppress and not not acknowledge your emotions in that way. And so always turning it inward and um, anger, if it is expressed, can pick up a gun, can pick up a fist, can verbally abuse mm -hmm. someone. And if it's held in, it is like a hot coal. And if, if it's suppressed over and over and over again, over years, you can become sick and then that energy is turned against you. So it's really, really good that you're helping men at that stage so that they don't develop those issues, right? Yeah. And I felt different as a guy because I, I actually connected more with my mom than my dad. And so I was, you know, the nice guy, the people pleaser. Uh, when we had family functions, I tended to be around the women more than the guys. And, you know, my dad and his buddies would go hunting. And that wasn't something that, that I, that resonated with me. And so that also created this, this con conflicting kind of <laughs> identity for me is I'm supposed to be the, you know, who am I, who am I? I, I, I don't really connect with the, this macho kind of stereotypical guy. Um, and yet, you know, am I supposed to, or, or, or how's it supposed to work? So a lot, it's interesting because a lot of the, the men that I help, it's, um, it's the women in their life that actually introduce them to me. Uh, it's their, their spouse or their mother. Uh, and then a lot of the guys I meet are similar to me. They're, they're playing the nice guy thinking that strategy is going to work. 
and it actually backfires and uh and they're they're stuck in their identity and and trying to move forward with things so yeah yeah and they're stuck in becoming passive aggressive and yeah. there's so many mm -hmm. other things that suffer there's so many um uh, so many um, cyst, you know, communities that's like religious uh, communities, for instance, that you know also, you know, have taught it's not good to get angry, it's not good mm -hmm. to be angry, it's not good to get in contact with your angry, you know, don't don't show that side, don't 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 get in contact with it. A good Christian shouldn't be angry. So that's actually a community that really needs to be supported mm -hmm. in that way because. They've been mm -hmm. suppressing that anger for a long time. This is a, a raw, primal human emotion that is part of our humanity. And, um, you know, when we use our anger to liberate ourselves and heal from the past so that we can discover what's true for us, it's it's a huge piece. I'd like to have you come back, Aaron, you know, in the future where uh, you and I could do, you know, another uh show like a longer one, mm -hmm. um, because I'm I'm passionate about this topic. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to talk more about it. Maybe we can even do several where the message gets out because I, I appreciate um, that you're helping men, um, you know, the 30 and up because yeah. this is really important work. Yeah, I'm finding more and more are like even just the different um, communities I'm in online. Like there's just a lot of men that are are really struggling right now and uh, and they are you know, in that dynamic of who am I supposed to be here? I'm supposed to be a provider for my family. And yet for the, the economy or whatever, their mental health is getting in the way. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, so it's definitely a passion of mine to, uh, to bring healing to them and, and their families too. And then there's suicide, you know, so that, yeah. you know, we're talking about depression. One mm -hmm. of the things that I've done whenever I come come across a client that's depressed, I will do everything I can in our session work to get them pissed off. Um, mm. like literally, you know, because right. I want to move that anger from depression and bring it up, bring it up a little bit into mm -hmm. the power center where it's because you've held it down so long. So getting getting that getting that energy moving. Yeah, um, well, let's tell the audience how they can find you on social media. Yeah, so Engage Coaching Group, there's a, a Facebook page there. I'm also on Instagram, uh, Aaron Solly. You can find me on there as well. Yeah. Good. Well, Aaron, I, I think it's wonderful. I'm glad that you came on the show today. I want to tell you, too, that the link that you have for um, the people that you sent out to join you today, you can use the same for the replay link. And um We'll definitely be in contact with you again to uh, talk about a, a few a longer show uh, uh, where we can talk about anger and specifically speak to the men that are out there that are that. Sounds good. Thanks so, so much for having you me. Wanna, you're welcome. You're welcome. I want to thank the audience today for listening and tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Spread the word, everyone. Share the stories of hope with people that you know that are struggling with whatever it is that's going on in their life, because most of the guests that come on here have been through similar situations and have liberated um, themselves. And so, we, you know, if, if one can do it, we all can do it. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. Wake up to love your call to action. Tune in each week on transformation talk radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.